Well, we're very honored to be joined by the man who single-handedly dragged uh, Martin Redlicky to an NCAA title <laughs> a few years ago, uh, coming to us from Indian Wells, Mackenzie McDonald. It's uh, great to see you. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not in Indian Wells. I know I'm going to see you in Miami, but how are you after a, a fun little trip to Mexico? Yeah, guys, all good. Happy to be here with you guys. It's been a while since I've seen you, Noah, and Mike, too. But uh, good to be back in the States from Mexico. It was, uh, it was a long week, I'd say. It's hot down there, so... I love Indian Wells. I love California being from here. So happy to be in my home state. I will say Martin doesn't talk about you when he refers to his title. He never says Mackey. It's like, yeah, you know, my title, you know, when I went to NCAAs, that was, that was a tough one. I'm like, Martin. He knows it. He knows it, but also the next year he won it with Evan Zeus. So he's got that over me. Oh, that is true. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So I want to start with Indian Wells because that's where obviously you're going to be playing later this week. You grew up in Northern California, Mackie. What was that first time that you went down to Indian Wells and kind of had that uh, that first experience of that Masters event? Well, when I was eight years old, I got to go and be a little fan and get some autographs. I, and the grounds are exactly how I remember them being so young. And I remember standing outside that grass area and getting autographs. I remember you know, seeing Roddick there. I actually got to hit with the Bryan brothers. I was eight years old and, and I was like following Wayne Bryan around because I knew him a little bit. So that was really fun for me. Um, that's my first memory of Indian Wells as a little junior kid. But uh, I mean, I've been going down there since, uh, I mean, there were 12s nationals, Easter Bowl. Um, and then my first time playing the pros, I was in college. They gave me a wild card and my butt kicked in qualities quick. But <laughs> the next year, I got another one, went around, had a tight match. So been playing there a lot. It's a, uh, it's a good spot for me. You know, I always had the pressure of being in New York playing the open. Do you feel that kind of pressure being a Californian? I know Fritz has talked about there. You're talked about there. You know, what does that feel I, like? You know, I feel the same thing at the open at us mm -hmm. open. I think, <laughs> you know, no, New York for me just doesn't do it all the time. <laughs> it's, it's just a little bit too chaotic for me. Yeah. I was going to say, you're Plus, not staying it. Down, and that bus ride, man. I mean, here, like, it's way more chill. I mean, it's California vibes. You know, my family comes down, but I mean, it's spacious here. It's two minutes to the courts, not an hour and a half, maybe in New York. Um, and then, no, I mean, the scenery is so good. You got the mountains in the background. Um, I'd say I feel a little bit, I think I felt a little bit in college, but now I feel pretty relaxed about it. Like, do you have like teachers coming out or anything from like your childhood that you ever say like, hey, do you have a ticket? You're like, fuck, I have two. I, you know? <laughs> I, I think I'm too far for that being from NorCal. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like like Tiburon Challenger, those challenges in, in, back in the day a little bit. I felt that a little bit more. But here, you know, I get the Bruins out. That's always fun. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's as far as it gets. Um, I, when you were growing up, Mackie, I, I guess when, when I first became aware of you, like challengers and obviously college stuff like that, you know, it, everybody kind of knew who you were, the the identity. But I, what always kind of um, amazed me was how many bright tennis minds were around you as you were growing up. I mean, Rosie was such a connection for you back in the day. Wayne Ferreira, I know, was a guy who kept an eye on you. Brad Stein. I mean, that's that's a lot of high level tennis minds to have as a junior. What what was that like? How did you, I, I guess, come about all these relationships? I think I was pretty fortunate. You know, I think tennis chose me before I chose it. My dad had a big dream for me to go pro. So, you know, I started at the age of three and, um, I mean, for me, um, I was just lucky. My dad gave me all the opportunities to have good coaching from a young age. So starting my development with Rosie starting and then going to, you know, Texas for a while, had coaches out there. I mean, my dad being an oral surgeon really got me like, you know, the best they could get for NorCal Wayne Ferrer right there. And all the things even Wayne was telling me at the age of 12, you know, it's not really, you know, hitting my brain the same way. When I'm getting older, I'm understanding, you know, his concepts and theories a little bit more. But I think I've been fortunate to have really good coaching and uh, different voices along my whole pathway, for sure. I mean, even into the pros. I mean, now I got Robbie Ginepri, and that's even adding another level of development and, and, and um, yeah, and game style. So I've been pretty blessed with that. I guess I was always curious where your game style came from, because when people talk about, you know, and they talk about my height and you're too small, you're a name I always brought up. But you yeah. play a very different style of tennis. I mean, people call it a little bit old school. Where did that start? 
I don't know. It's crazy because, like, me growing up, you know, I had actually a Western grip like this. Mm. I mean, because the balls were so high up. You know, <laughs> I was a small kid, you know, but I hit my growth spurt, you know, Ish. at Ish. five, <laughs> ten, at yeah. five ten, yeah. short, you know, here. But, um, I mean, for me, I've always liked hitting the ball super hard and super flat. And, like, when I was with Wayne, he kind of changed my grip all the way from here to, like, Eastern, the other direction. The other side of the racket. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know why. I just always loved smacking the ball. I'm sure you remember that when I was and, – and, like, I remember my grip was so Easter. I remember, you know, some of the guys were making fun of me uh, for, for him. I, I mean, I still, like, get – I mean, I hit Ben Shelton, what, yesterday, and I've been, like, five balls like normal, and then he's trying to hit the same way I do. But it, it, I'm, for me, it's like I just hit – that's just how I hit the ball, um, which I think is different. It gives me a little bit of an it factor. But um, I don't know. I've just learned to hit it clean like that and um, – but I think I've developed more spin, actually, you know, the last couple of years or being able to have the variety as well. But I think I'd say that game style with coming forward, I like to volley, like to smack the ball and hit returns, and I like to use my speed as, as something. So where is that next level for you now? You know, kind of where you're at, seeing where the Americans are. I know this is the same old kind of shitty conversation of matching each other up, but yeah. what does that next level look like, especially at like an Indian Wells in Miami, which – is giving me the most FOMO. I think this Australia is pretty good, but like Indian Wells, I think is a tournament I missed the most. Yeah. Um, I think, I think right now I'm on a good pathway right now. I feel like Robbie's helped me a lot. I've actually added a lot to my game and I still feel like there's more to be presented and kind of flourish with how I'm doing. I feel like I've been playing really well, but um, I just need to keep playing, to be honest. Like I really feel like the results are coming. The, the, I feel like I'm in a good headspace mentally um, and I'm healthy, which is most important. So I think I've been adding a lot more variety. I think my serves improved. I think, I mean, my knowledge on the court has improved. You know, I've had really good coaches. Maybe that, you know, results to technique or styles. But I think Robbie's someone that, you know, really did it and understands my style because he's fairly similar. And so he can paint the picture to me a little bit uh, more clear right now. Yeah, that's it's an interesting. I, I know you guys came together in the off season after he had been working with uh, Jack last year uh, yeah. through, through a good chunk of the year. He's such a quiet guy, Mackie. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, what's he like in practice, and why is he able to get so much out of people that he works with? Um, I think he man he's such a good guy you know I, I mean from everyone I talk to like everyone's like oh I love Rob I love Rob he's a great guy and like I didn't really know him that well too partially because he is quiet like you said um I think personality wise we mesh well we're a little bit opposites in a way but he's 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 so chill so like I like those those vibes of him just you know taking things pretty relaxed in a way but really focusing on things that need to be focused on um what was the question again? Just, just what, how does he really instill things in people? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How does that, that coaching dynamic work? Um, I think he's just got a good idea about what I do need to work on. And it's like, these are the two things and we go and do those two things and then we do the next thing. And it's just like very, you know, planned out in a, in a nice, calm, calm demeanor that actually works for me. It's not, it's not, you know, forced. It's not a, uh, it's not rushed or anything. We just kind of go about our business how, you know, the best we can. And I think we're doing really professionally. On the college tennis side, how has that kind of, you know, you went a couple extra years more than other people have. Most people don't go at all. How has that been for you? What is the conversation like? Are you still pro college tennis, you know, even at this point in time? Or do you regret kind of the situation? I mean, tough to regret it, but. No, I, I'm a massive college advocate. I really feel like, I mean, there's so many foreigners even. I like, I know we want more Americans, you know, in that system maybe, but I mean, I just feel like it's such a good route. I feel like this whole NIL deal is a little bit, you know, shaking it up in a negative way because everything's looked at such in a business meet that like you could say we're both jealous you could say yeah. we were, we're both jealous that we never got it i mean <laughs> you know i know maybe but actually you know i'm not because i feel like you know would i have gone to ucla if freaking Tulane gave me i don't know five or what whatever yeah. the number would be like i i'm actually thankful that i didn't have to have that headache because me as a youngster 
and a junior, I mean, I, I did, you know, I come off, you know, maybe kind of quiet and, and, and chill, but like, I also, you know, I overthink, you know, and that would have really messed me up and pulled me in so many directions to make that decision where to go. Whereas, you know, for me, it was like family history, UCLA, great team, know all the guys, I'm going to do UCLA. Whereas like now it's like, it's more of a headache. It's more of a business and it takes away kind of that college experience for a lot of the guys. And like, and like, you don't know what Ohio state's doing. And then this school and like, I mean, there's no congruency. It's a really messed up system right now, but I am a massive college advocate. I think a lot of guys should go to college. I think everyone should enjoy their experience there and grow as a person and then like as a player as well. And, you know, there's really good uh, college systems with good coaches. There's some that aren't, aren't that good, but you got to know the difference and find your, find your way. And it's a stepping stone. So to that end, I, I wanted to get into this with you about UCLA. Obviously you can point to you, Marcos, um, who, am, who am I missing off the top? Cressy. Cressy thank you, Maxime. Yeah. Uh, Cressy, um, on top of it, I mean, uh, Dennis Novikov got very close to top 100. There's development is my point at UCLA. And yet right now they are really struggling. Yet it's the UCLA, same coach. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Billy, Billy Martin's still there. He's a legend from Hinsdale, Illinois, just up the street from both my parents actually, but that's a different story. But like, why has it been so difficult over the last couple of years for UCLA considering there's just, it, it feels to me to your point, Mar, Mar, uh, Mackie, that there's just like this, this loss of what's important in terms of development as a player. And I, I look at the UCLA staff as like a, t a team, a group that's going to be able to develop people and they're yeah. not getting the recruits. And I, I can't understand why. Maybe during COVID, you know, the hustle was a little bit lower and maybe, you know, that domino effect from that time, maybe where some other people were kind of working a little harder. Maybe that did something to it. I haven't been around the program too much to know exactly. Um, but maybe it's just one of those swings because there are ebbs and flows with teams. Yeah. Um, you know, it would be nice if we get, you know, a top recruit, uh, someone that really wants to build at UCLA. I know being the school it is too, like, you know, there's not really any shady stuff going on there. There's no high incentives, maybe this NIL, which could be playing a factor too. I mean, yeah. UCLA as a school has been in the red, I'm sure like a lot of schools the last couple of years. Um, with the athletic department and that's a school that you know you I mean in LA great basketball team great football team yeah. and you want to have a green a green year and I think that's where the big 10 switch came into play yeah. um, I think that's going to affect you know the school as well how you know how can Billy really tell oh we're, we're going to be going to these you know these schools now there's a whole mix of college tennis that's that's I'm Again, thankful that I went through that stage already and got out of it in a clean and great way. Kind of going through a little bit of your ranking history, um, and not that you didn't have great wins, but it took you a minute to get inside the top 100, again, compared to some of the other young guys. To that point, Noah, that, like, Mackie, you had, like, seven straight challenger semifinals. There was, like, this brick wall, like, early in that career where you, like— When you was just, that? What year? Um, 17? I don't know. 16, 17. Still, even in, yeah, I mean, I had a bunch of semis. I was always like right there. I, it took me, <laughs> what, like two years, a little under two years to break in. Yeah. I think that was a healthy, uh, it wasn't a Nori or it wasn't like a Shelton come, come through, but you know, I, I'd say it wasn't too slow. What do you think, Mike? I don't, I don't think, I think it was, yeah, I think it was completely a normal. Was it two years? I thought it was like three-ish. No, no, no. It was a little under two. Okay. I feel like I was just slowly creeping. I didn't have yeah. massive jumps besides, it, but yeah. It was one of those, you, as soon, I knew as soon as you were able to get to that final and get it, like it was just, it was done. It was just like for a second, that semifinal, it really felt like there was a wall, like a mental hurdle that you needed to clear. And as soon as yeah. you cleared that, it was, it was easy. Yeah. So how did it feel kind of making that transition instead of the top 100? And then, you know, the, the obviously the, the talk is always, hey, if you can get into top 100, you could stay there. But what was that initial reaction once you cleared that hurdle? What was that thought? What were people saying around you uh, to either improve upon or keep going? Um, I think for me, I've always made, you know, moments pretty big. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of success in tennis with juniors, college, and then pro. But, you know, I've, I'd say I've really, like, been fully aware and involved in the whole process so like for me you know winning my first challenger I was I mean I was so stoked I was a uh, Fairfield 
you know, Matt Clore was helping me at the time. And what a tournament. Uh, yeah. No, that was the year <laughs> that they had the fires too. Yep. 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 So, so that was a, that was a good, good dub for me. And, you know, I knew I was creeping close. Um, and then from there, I had already won a match at a grand slam level, but I never won a match at a 250, 500, or a thousand. Mm. And mid year, you know, Octagon got me a wild card at her token Bosch on the grass. And I, I won like two matches and I creeped up and then it was Wimbledon. So for me, I played, it was 2018, debut at Wimbledon. I'm ranked 106. They dropped the list by three spots because they don't have enough people to give wild cards to or they didn't know who to give them to. And I was like second to last in the Wimbledon draw and I make fourth round first year. And that was where my ranking jumped from 106 or eight to you know, 80 or 78 or something like that. A little that. Dennis Kudla-esque there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so for me, you know, that match of making top 100 is massive. And I got that with that first round win. But a jump into 80 was pretty surreal for me. Um, and then, you know, you open your eyes to, okay, what's the next goal? Because I feel like tennis, you know, the whole time, you know, you're chasing, you know, that top 100. And I know, you know, Banks is going through that right now. And he's 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 got his eyes on that one. And you know, I, I, you know, I told him, you know, you, you accomplish that, there's going to be another monkey on your back, right? Like right after that one gets off. And like, that's the thing with tennis. It's like, you know, you're never satisfied. You're always chasing something else. And, and, uh, the more process minded you can stay with that is, is the better, better thing to do. Noah's going to try to change the subject here a little bit, but, uh, Mackie, ha are you familiar with the, the little wager that, that Mr. Eubanks and Noah have, or you, you know about that one? Yeah. You know, uh, I didn't know about that. Uh, it, it's literally, I, I, Chris doesn't have a conversation with me anymore without bringing this up now. Yeah, for people who don't know, it's $10,000 to the first player right. who makes top 100. Only right. one of them are, are now playing tennis. So, <laughs> it's tough. so good. Um, I totally forgot what the fuck I was going to talk about next, to be honest with you. And yeah. also, I don't even want you in the conversation anymore, Mike. <laughs> Banks is, is going to accomplish that. He just needs to... Right, he doesn't need to do anything. He's doing fine. He's playing well. He beat me up in a in a set last week in Acapulco. He's he's playing well. We're not we're done here. You <laughs> I did want to kind of get into some of the, the non-tennis, you know, on court stuff because let's start with Chris Eubanks. Uh you guys room together yeah. for for a little bit of time down in Orlando. Um yeah. Walk us through that because I mean, you you had Chris as he was kind of coming up. You were the more experienced, I think, at the time of of the two, a little bit higher level as well. Uh, I I know that uh, his coach at the time, um, Philip Gresk, was spending a lot of time. I mean, Orlando is not exactly a guy to uh, a, a town to have to be like twenty five young male in Orlando is not ideal. So what what do you guys do to pass the time? Well, let's see. <laughs> Chris, Chris was an unbelievable roommate. First of all, he uh, super clean, Ren was on time, super nice guy. Right. And then Gress, and then Gress came in too, a little more dirty, actually really fun. So we got, we all had a great time. I think it's just the people you have around you. But I would um, love to see Mackie like the rent is late, and he goes up to these two guys that are six nine, and he says, oh, "Hey guys, like it's been a few days, like just trying to get my cash, you know." Yeah. <laughs> no, they were easy, but uh, I mean, what Chris came in during COVID, first of yeah, all. No. So I mean, I've known him. He's such a nice guy. It was so easy. I mean, we we were hitting. A little bit and then what i mean i was always on the road he's always on the road once once the tour started again that's the one thing i've always liked really living in orlando you know it's always like oh like what do you do and stuff but even this year i've been home three days hmm. i've been there three days this year and with that that's coming back from australia unpacking my crap packing it back up and getting on a flight the next day and that's happened twice so like i've barely been home and and it's nice having a base and somewhere to actually put your stuff and tell people to ship boxes too. Um, Cause you need that. Yeah. But um, now back to it. I mean, me and Chris had a good time. I, I feel like he had a good time there too for the time being. It was a little stepping stone for him. Um, but yeah. During, during this time in Orlando, while I was there a little bit, you know, there was this you and Kipson deep into yeah. the ice bath situation where are we now in this ice bath? Are, are you doing head under? Are we still doing these daily? Where are you with ice baths? Again, I've been home a lot. I still have that thing. I have it in my garage. I got, I got the full gym in there. 
it, like Indian Wells has an ice bath. Are you taking that every day? Is that a part of the daily routine? No, I'm not. I'm not actually crazy on the ice baths, okay. dude. Over over COVID, over COVID, I was so lost and bored. Well, I was coming <laughs> back from my injury too. I had yeah. no idea like which directions to go with a lot of stuff because I was I got I dropped my ranking dropped. I was trying to get my game back together, and then like you're like want to play tournaments and hit, but like you're not, not able to because COVID, and then um. No, I mean, I look at my place in Orlando as such a good training base because it's so easy. Like I, like, I get down there, it's five miles from the site, at the gym, it's comfortable, it's quiet, it's easy. So we just need some players, but that's a different <laughs> story. Well, you got Bjorn and, and Maddie, they're engaged. I mean, just that's an easy yeah. session, right? So excited for them. Yeah, you know, I'm happy Bjorn's back. He's, yeah. uh, he'll be playing. Yeah, and I'm super happy he's healthy. I know he's dealt with that for a while. But no, like I mean, it's it's lacking. It's really lacking some bodies right now. So we talk about looking towards something next, but talk about you know how exciting it is to be around fifty in the world. What are you excited about? Kind of like what are the perks of being fifty in the world? Man, you get free hotel room. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Guy racket. fifty in the world and what he does. He's like, I get a Wilson tennis racket. No, it's uh. <laughs> I mean, I, the thing is, I've been I've been right here before, like in 2019 when I got hurt, I was 56, and then post injury after COVID, I was ranked top 40 in the race to end the year, mm. and fucking COVID had my ranking at the year end like 50 something mm. because of the the ranking system, which I still take to heart. Actually, Wait, have you never been top 50? <laughs> I actually, did not. Oh, I hit 48. I hit 48. Okay. Um, and that might've been last year. I think last year was a little bit of a different, different year for me. I changed coaching. I, I, uh, going through some stuff or figuring some stuff out, but you know, I feel like I feel in a good spot right now and I feel like I don't really have a lot of points, but I'm not, again, like I've been so hyper-focused maybe on like ranking and these other things. Whereas right, right now, like, I feel like I'm, I'm really focused on what I'm improving on. I feel like that ranking will, will show itself with how i'm playing but i mean perks for being top 50 actually i'm in, i'm staying in a house this week which is nice you know <laughs> i'm uh they gave me a bmw to drive this week when you're top 60 65 at indian wells that's actually an unbelievable perk compared to you know before with enterprise uh <laughs> really used to get free stuff <laughs> i'm still putting money away i'm still trying to just just see you know, that yeah you know how it is yeah <laughs> Well, I don't think Noah actually knows. Yeah, I have no he hasn't idea. made money in years. Been um, <laughs> lifetimes. <laughs> uh, you, you, also, you also just signed with the uh, original Penguin as well. I know that's a new sponsor for you. That's I, I really think it's very cool to have these new kind of niche brands that are not like Nike. Everybody has the same kit. I think it's really unique, and I really like it a lot. I'm so stoked to be with them. They've been great so far. They're so new to tennis and racket. I think they're actually in pickleball too. Um, and I think now it's only me and Isla. I think boss is actually done with them. So it's actually really nice being the one of one. You yeah. can call me the emperor penguin if you want. Um, <laughs> and then you got Isla too. So we thought I mean, about this before. Uh, <laughs> I said it one time, but, uh, but no, it's uh, I, the clothing. I was actually shocked because I wanted to do the deal and I hadn't even felt the clothes. And then I got my stuff and, I was presently surprised at how good of a brand it is. I didn't really know their presence off the court too with their lifestyle stuff, but I mean, that stuff is ridiculous and I'm going to absolutely get all the free stuff because that's the top 50 perk I want. Um, it kind of looks like you. What, the penguin? Yeah, yeah I'll, like, like, I'll do a little waddle for you. I was going to say, I was gonna say, I've been told I walk. <laughs> well, maybe like you should grab some too now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see if we can uh, get some hand-me-downs. We're probably yeah, the same he's, size. He's got a sponsorship at uh, Goodwill right now, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a big deal for him. <laughs> we should um, there together, Mike. <laughs> it was fun. Um, Mackie, you you had the injury. You mentioned that, and um, I know we're, you're kind of on a time thing. We want to make sure you're you're ready for Indian Wells this week, but you um, you went into some broadcasting. And I have to tell you, when when I first heard that you were going to be doing some broadcasting, I think my interactions with you had been pretty limited. I always yeah. thought of you as the the quiet guy. Um, I even remember we were in a car together, me, you, Brad Stein, and somebody else in Knoxville one year, and like you you at me and just like yes, exactly. And you're just like, I was just like, oh, how is this guy going to have the broadcasting career? And you you just nailed it as soon as you went to the U.S. Open. We're doing that, and I'm just 
wondering where that personality came from and is it more just kind of like reserved if you don't know anybody and then you're able to let it out what what was that transition for you into broadcasting i think so mike we've had a kind of a weird relationship then we have you know i've, I've been super quiet i guess uh i think that's kind of how i am at times but like you know maybe you ask noah i mean mm -hmm. Noah really knows me would you say <laughs> the same noah we stand quiet. I, I would say I would say there's a wall up initially, but once you have like this goofy side of Mackie that comes out, and yeah. then it's but then once it's out, like it's Pandora's box. Then you're, it's open, yeah. it's done, it's over. Like yeah. then you're like, yeah. how does this, this kid's got to like shut up eventually? So that's right? pretty that's pretty spot on with it. So hopefully Mike would break down that wall. But uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, I mean I was it, the injury was tough, and for me it was finding things to do and occupy my time I mean you really go from again being like 50 in the world and like you know you're 23 you got so much to look forward to all these tournaments and like it was the first first kind of year on tour for me to literally sitting in your apartment in Lake Nono not able to walk for a couple months I mean you can't even imagine so I took some classes there which kept me busy which was really good I took five and then once I was able to start walking I I jumped into commentating I think I have the ability to do a lot of things and even after tennis i think i want to expand that and see where i can go in other industries as well i know tennis is my niche but um i want to try other things for sure i'm definitely open to that but hopefully you did listen in to some of my commentary i think i did okay with it i think I'll, i think you did too yeah. thank you i appreciate that and, and it is something i would do again for sure um yeah so it, it's just something for the resume i did a you know i'm working on a film and television minor for you say as well hopefully that gets you somewhere too but uh yeah yeah i mean you just got to talk to banks i mean he has the tennis channel connections that i, I can't provide i mean that <laughs> banks is good banks got it he's he's good banks got it. ken yeah. solomon's a bruin too so you know that's that's right around the corner i need to transfer um <laughs> last question i i believe are, are you you and maria still you guys are the Thing? so funny yeah i'm actually she's in the finals right yeah, now i know that's what i was I that's what i'm looking up, at too so. i'm looking at it too she's you won all in, a, yeah, in the third set right now. Bar right now she's going for a shot so i'm really proud of that today but <laughs> maria uh, mateus is is who we're talking about yeah but she's in final uh wh where is that one uh spring texas um yeah so she hasn't been in a final in a couple of years which is really great for her. she's playing some good tennis she's been up in charleston actually training with mike sell so i went Did up there I actually strike the ball at all yeah yeah, we hit, we hit, but uh, no, it's going really, really, really well. I'm super happy. So and you're balancing the, the whole tennis, like both being at different places all the time. You're managing that well. Yeah, she was hurt uh, last year uh, when we started hanging out and the first part. So every time I came home, I mean, she was home. She gave me some turns. She came to Miami last year, uh, US Open. She had my coaching badge. I didn't have a coach. Um, and then uh yeah i mean this year might be a little bit tougher but you know we're doing just fine we're super happy we're she's so supportive i have to say and super helpful and i think i'm doing the same for her so i think it's healthy both ways we'll see each other when we can but we're both super happy anything yeah. from you noah before we before we let mackie go and grab lunch and practice in the beautiful desert I don't. I just uh, no. I'm picturing the mountains you're gonna look at. I'm, I'm experiencing major FOMO right now, but uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll I'll be back soon just to even see it. And uh, I'm missing Mackie. Yeah, guys, great seeing you guys. It's been a while, so thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, I'll see you in Miami in just a couple of weeks. Sounds good, guys. Thank you. All right, see thanks. You.